Knowing the right thing to say is only half of the responsibility of being a supporting caregiver. The other half revolves around actually doing it. One of the devastating for me in some of my relationships with friends after my wife died was how, the, how much they pulled away. They would say something and never follow through. Very lonely period of time because of so few people that followed through. You know, I really appreciate the ones who did. One who called me up three months later says, Dave, let's go for a walk. Let's have a chat. How are you doing? Very few people do that. By that time, everybody was gone. And so appreciate, so here's some very practical suggestions. First of all, grievers appreciate your presence at the time of loss. You don't have to have a lot of things to say when someone has an immediate loss. Your presence is, says volumes, it's huge, very vital, and that's true in nearly any culture. Now some cultures have rules about who can be present at what points. Find out what that is, figure out what your place would be, and then follow through with that presence. Oftentimes that first week, if you're close to a griever, some of the major decisions they may need help with. I've found that to be true with family members, um, in fact, even distant family members that the first week they just needed, not without being pushed around, but a little bit of guidance, here, 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 we need to do this, this, and this, some practical stuff to help them in that first period of time. But here's where the challenge comes for a true grief mentor, grief counselor. At the three-week level, the tendency in the Western culture, at least, is to pull away from someone who's experienced loss. Most of us were not that close. We weren't the one married to that person. And we, okay, it hurt. We grieved for a little bit, and now life goes on. But it, I found about the three-week level, that's when the real grief sets in. When that person really is able to come to terms. I found myself walking around the house telling myself she really died. Two and three weeks after the fact. About the third week, it, it's now it's just starting to set in and most people are pulling away. So that's when you want to come in alongside and to be that, that helper. Now at the, at the three month level, commonly, now not everybody, again, I'm just giving these as general, general guidelines. At the three month level, the griever is still processing it. And sometimes the best question you can ask is, so tell me your journey so far. What's it, how, are you, how are you doing right now? What's, what's, what, how, how's it been? Describe your journey. And they, I, wanted to t I wanted to talk about it more three months after my wife died than I did the day it happened. The day it happened, the event was she died. And oh, it hurts. But three months later, I'm processing the whole thing, and I needed somebody to pr bounce it off of. And like I said, I needed it so bad, I actually went looking, and I found other men who had experienced the same thing to get help, but not everybody has that access. At the six months level, people are e trying to e evaluate. I found I, I, at the six month level, I thought I was going crazy because I was still finishing up the process and my emotions were starting to catch up with my logic, but they hadn't quite gotten there yet. And I still needed someone to go for a walk to bounce things off of uh, to understand where I was and where I, where I needed to go. Because I was having to def redefine who I was. I was no longer married. I was no longer that person's wife. I was no longer a couple. Who am I? Where do I fit in? And it was about the six month level and all that kind of, kind of hit me and I was trying to catch up with that. By the ninth month level, I was really wanting, feeling better and wanting to get back inculcated in society. And uh, by that time, many of my married friends still viewed me as half of a couple and since half of them wasn't there, they didn't even invite me to events where I needed to get pulled back into to society and that nobody was there. This is another very important thing. As a potential helper or supporter or caregiver for the bereaved, the word I want you to remember here is the word firsts. All of the firsts that happen in life after someone dies are significant steps in the grieving process. The first time I met my best friend after my wife died, the first time I went back to church 
after my wife died. The first time I went out in public by myself and my wife was not alive. The first time I met, went to a family reunion. The first Thanksgiving, the first Christmas, the first sunny summer day, the first time her birthday came around, the first Fourth of July, the first family picnic I w went to. All the firsts are significant steps in the grieving process and many times a caregiver can be a great help just by understanding that that might be a difficult thing for that person and you can come alongside there. And then of course, and many of us in today's world, you may have to put it on your calendar, put it on your phone to get a hold of the anniversary of that, of that loss, whether it be losing uh, a, a job, losing uh, someone to death, losing a relation, having a relationship loss, whatever, that anniversary can be a significant uh, time for you to help someone who is grieving.